All right, everybody, here we go. This is chapter 12. Um, and we're going to be talking about surface area and volume of solids. So this presentation is going to be sections 12.1 and 12.2 in your textbook. We're not actually going to do everything that's in there, um, but we're going to kind of hit the things that I think are most important for you guys to know right now. So here we go. Um, so part of what you guys should have seen um, in your investigation that you did um, in the last class where you were building <clears throat> the um, polyhedrons out of nets is that um, a polyhedron is just a solid that's bounded by polygons um, and the polygons can be um, any shape um, and we'll see that there are a few different types of polyhedrons but in general you'll be able to see that just like you saw in the last class that the faces are those polygons right and then the edges are places where two polygons intersect and then the vertices are where two or more polygons intersect, the corners. Um, when we're naming polyhedrons, we use um, the base of the polyhedron to name it. Um, so for example, here on the left, you'll see that this is a pentagonal um, prism. And it's a prism because both the top and the bottom, the bases of it, are the same shape and they're congruent um, and they're parallel to each other. So that's a prism and this is a pentagonal prism. Um, and then you'll see that what connects the two bases of the prism is just a series of rectangles. And we'll talk a little bit more about prisms in a minute. Um, and then here on the right, you'll see that this is a pyramid and it's a triangular pyramid because the base of the pyramid, the bottom of the pyramid is a triangle. So our polyhedrons can either be prisms or they can be pyramids. Um, and just an important distinction to make is this idea of something that's, that is a polyhedron versus something that's not a polyhedron. And so if you look at this, these two groups of shapes, the ones on the left are what we consider to be polyhedras, prisms and pyramids. The ones on the right are things that would not be polyhedrons, um, and they're not because they have rounded edges. So cylinders, cones, spheres, even though they're still three-dimensional shapes, they're not considered to be polyhedron because um, their faces are not all polygons. So if we look at these three examples, A, B, and C here, um, we want to think about is the solid a polyhedron and then if it is we're going to name it um, and then we're going to find the number of faces vertices and edges so this is just like a little bit of review of what you were doing uh, in the last activity so just pause me for a second take a look at these three and try it um, and then we'll talk about it Okay, so if you look here, right, this first one, A, is formed by polygons, so it's a polyhedron. The two bases are congruent rectangles, so it's a rectangular prism. It has six faces, eight vertices, and 12 edges. Letter B is also a polyhedron um, because it is formed by polygons. It is a pyramid and it's a hexagonal pyramid because the base of it here is a hexagon. Um, so it has seven faces, one base, three triangular faces that you can see in the front, three that are sort of behind, and then um, it has seven vertices and 12 edges. And then letter C um, is a cone which means it has a curved surface, which is not a polyhedron. So just again, to recap about prisms, prisms are polyhedron that have two congruent faces um, called bases, which are in parallel planes. So if we look at this, 
we can see that the top here is a hexagon and the bottom here is a hexagon. They're congruent and they're parallel to each other. Um, and then the lateral faces, so the faces that connect the two bases around the sides, um, are parallelograms. And this would be true for any type of prism. So we can find the surface area of a polyhedron by adding up the areas of all of the faces of that polyhedron. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about how to do that. So if we're thinking about finding the surface area of a regular, or sorry, a rectangular prism with a height of two centimeters, a length of five centimeters, and a width of six centimeters, the first thing we have to do is sketch what that prism would look like, and then imagine unfolding it to make a net. So kind of doing the reverse of what we were doing in our last activity. Um, and so just pause me for a second and just try that. Sketch the prism, imagine unfolding it to make a net, and like what does that net look like, and can you label on the net where all of those dimensions would be? So just pause me and try it. Okay, so you should have gotten something that looks like this, right? So here's your rectangular prism. You have... Um, a height of two centimeters, a length of five, and a width of six. If we were to unfold the whole thing, this is generally speaking what it would look like. So we have one, two congruent faces, and then these two congruent faces, and then these two congruent faces. And so if we we're trying to figure out the surface area of the whole shape, we could do that um, by adding up the areas of all of those faces. And so why don't you guys try that? And so if we look at it, right, we can find the area of each face, add them all together, right? So the left and the right face would be six by two, so they'd be 12. Um, the front and the back would be 5 by 2, so they would be 10. The top and the bottom would be 6 by 5, so they would be 30. And if we add them all together, right, we would have 30 plus 30 plus 10 plus 10 plus 12 plus 12 would be a total surface area of 104 square centimeters. So there are a bunch of theorems in this section um, with formulas in them, but a lot of the theorems are ones that if you're willing to use a little bit of logic, um, you could probably figure out without having to memorize a theorem. Um, so this one just gives you, generally speaking, the way to find the surface area of any right prism. Um, and basically all it says is that you're going to add up the surface area of the two bases. So if it was a triangular prism like this, you'd add the area of this triangle and the area of this triangle. And then the easiest way to find the lateral area or the area of those three lateral faces, the three rectangular faces that connect the two bases, the top and the bottom, would be to just find the perimeter of one of those base triangles and multiply that perimeter, the area, or sorry, the distance around the outside of the triangle times the height of that, um, of those um, lateral faces. So we're going to practice this in just a second. So here's a great example of a um, problem that has you find the lateral area and the surface area of this right prism. Um, and so just take a minute, pause, try this, and then on the next slide we'll talk about the answer. So if you look here, I sort of redrew that base, the triangular base, and you realize that if you need, want to find the area of that triangular base, you'll have to calculate the height. Um, it's an isosceles triangle, so if I put a um, segment through 
the center. It'll be an angle bisector, but it'll also be a bisector of the base. And it'll be perpendicular to the base. And so I can find that height using the Pythagorean theorem, which ends up being 11.79. And then, oh, sorry, nope, that ends up being 7.86. Once I have that height, I can use the height to find the area of the triangle, and the area of the triangle is just one half base times height. So this is the area of one of my base triangles from the previous problem, and there are two of them, so I'm going to multiply that by two. Then I'm going to take the perimeter of that base triangle, and the perimeter again is just the distance around the outside, and I'm going to add those up. And then I'm going to multiply it by the height, which is 9.1. So if you look back here, the height is 9.1. Um, and that would be the lateral area, 172.9. And then to find the total surface area, I'm just going to add those two values together. So I'm just going to stop here, um, and I'll continue with the rest of this in the next video.